Hi right, everyone, Alex Tardy here again. This is your latest video weather briefing. Here we are now in October and the start of a new water year. Now, in the short term, we're expecting a significant heat wave across Southern California in the upcoming several days. Let's take a look at things. So before we look forward, let's look back a little bit. The water year just ended and it was remarkable in terms of being wet. The blue shaded areas in central Southern California were one and a half to two times as wet as average. So that's almost two seasons in one. In fact, uh, parts of central California had the wettest water year on record. Here in Southern California, we had a lot of locations that were top five wettest. Let's take a look. Of the climate sites across our region, uh, these are the ones that we monitor closely. You can see San Diego made it into top 15 with a little bit of rain even on September 30th. Uh, other locations here, take a look at the area closest to you. These sites have over 30 years of data which makes them a climate site, an official climate site. Of note, Palomar Mountain in San Diego County, number one wettest. But you can take a look at a location like Big Bear Lake. Uh, they were number two wettest. Again, the water year is from October 1 through September 30th. Okay, what's coming up now? Now that we're starting a new water year, it looks like dry and really warm conditions. A Santa Ana wind pattern is going to set up this week, starting Wednesday and continue through the week. Uh, what's interesting with this event and what makes it different than some Santa Ana winds is that even though the Santa Ana wind is not strong, the gradient from high pressure to low pressure, as shown on the right-hand side, is not strong. It's enough to create offshore flow and push our sea breeze uh, off the water and keep it from coming inland. Now, at the same time, and this is important in making it a hot Santa Ana wind event, the upper level weather pattern or the jet stream, or lack of, is a big dome of hot air, uh, just like the heat waves we get during the warm season. And that sits right over us and builds and strengthens on Thursday, Friday. We get that question a lot. Um, I thought a Santa Ana wind is a cold wind. Well, it starts off in the lower part of the atmosphere near the surface, as high pressure and cold air over Utah. But when it makes it down here, it has to go up and over the mountains and that causes it to compress and warm, just like when you're heating uh, that you feel from a basketball if you're pumping air into it. Now, um, if you add on top of that a very warm, potentially warm air mass or a heat dome, it gets really hot. And that's what we're looking at in this type of Santa Ana wind event. So it's not the strength of the vent that determines the heat. Okay, uh, the heating is really gonna start up on Wednesday. So we'll gradually warm up. We're already feeling that now, but we really will notice it on Wednesday when the Santa Ana winds start kicking in. That'll push the marine air offshore and allow us to heat up. So by Wednesday, we're talking in the 90s for inland areas and widespread 80s on the coast. Now, when we go later in the week, Friday, end of the work week, temperatures are really hot inland. Widespread 90s, we'll have some locations around 100 degrees. How do we know that? Well, because the potential of the air mass is for temperatures around 100 if you keep that sea breeze away. So uh, that'll include our desert areas, but even some of our inland valleys. Now with this comes dry air. So the air is blowing across the desert. That's what a Santa Ana wind is. And so when you combine the very warm temperatures and the dry air, you get low humidity because humidity is relative to the temperature. So humidity is gonna be dry, uh, 10 to 20% a lot of places. You'll have to go to the beaches to feel any type of ocean effect. And it looks like these temperatures and dry air will last at least into Saturday of the upcoming weekend before we see a change to cooler and more moist. The winds, they're going to start, like I said, on Wednesday, and then they'll pick up, especially Wednesday night and Thursday morning, but we'll see them continuing even Friday morning. 
So we are talking about the wind prone areas like I-15 corridor Cajon Pass, the San Gregorio Pass, I-10, and then the San Diego Mountain Passes that go up and over uh, Mount Laguna and Pine Valley and then descend down into the deserts. But uh, do note that we will see some wind across the valleys, even though it's not expected to be strong. It is a dry wind and it'll aid in warming those temperatures up. Okay, uh, what is the outlook for October? Uh, now that we're starting off October really warm and we ended September on a wet cool note. So the official forecast is for above average precipitation or at least a chance a uh, better chance of being above average and slightly milder than average. So typically what that means is a mixture where we have uh, some cool events that, that are wet and we have some warm episodes that are dry. And when you average those together, you come out uh, with this map here for the month of October. So no strong signal of different type of weather or early start to the winter, uh, but nonetheless, uh, painted green a little bit and painted orange for above average temperature and uh, the best odds for a little bit above average precipitation and of course October is just the start of our new water year. Now if you look out further in the winter you've probably seen this perhaps December through February indications are for our core of the winter only a slight chance of above average or that green shading. That means it could still end up being average or below average. There's no strong favor uh, of being above average with precipitation. And that's coming from a very wet past winter. Temperatures are really not indicating anything uh, except you got to go up to the Pacific Northwest where there's an indication of warmer than average and a little bit drier than average. So right now there remains high uncertainty for the winter forecast December through February. But wait, I heard there's an El Nino. That is true. El Nino is here. It's expansive and well established along the Equatorial Pacific Ocean as shown here in this rectangle. Now El Nino is just the first part of getting any weather changes, whether it be drier, wetter, warmer, colder. El Nino is the warm phase of a very normal phenomena that occurs with relieving excessive warm water from the Western Pacific and pushing it to the east. So the opposite of La Nina that we've been in the past few years. But how come if there's a well-established El Nino in the moderate category, if not locally strong in the deep red areas, that we don't have high confidence for this upcoming winter? Well, El Nino we know will affect the tropics. We know it'll affect the jet stream, which brings us storms, but we don't know exactly where that lines up. We don't know if it'll be an outside pitch or inside pitch, and that could place it in Northern California, the Pacific Northwest, or um, more often in Southern California like last winter. So it's a lot of uncertainty with that. And on top of that, we have very warm water in the Northern Pacific and Central Pacific. That is caused by the past several years of lack of storms over the Pacific and excessive warming, uh, air temperatures over land being absorbed by the ocean and the lack of mixing from limited storm tracks or what we call an upper level ridge blocking the weather pattern in the Northern Pacific and Western Pacific. So the two areas work different. The tropics will work from bottom up and they'll affect the jet stream eventually, but we don't know exactly where that gets placed similar to how they can drive hurricanes in the Pacific with more energy. Now in the Northern Pacific, that warm water doesn't change the jet stream. It just doesn't. Uh, that warm water is a result of things that are going on in the atmosphere. So we do have uncertainty, considerable uncertainty coming up this winter, despite the fact that uh, we can look at this image taken just a day ago, showing much above average, well-established El Nino conditions along the Equatorial Pacific Ocean. So stay tuned uh, this fall and early winter to see if there's any more clue to what might happen, or at least what might happen compared to normal or averages this upcoming winter.